In this video, we want to find uh, the exact confidence intervals for a, a Poisson parameter. We're actually going to do it a couple different ways. Um, but one note, and it's widely known, that confidence intervals and hypothesis tests have a one-to-one -one relationship. That the uh, acceptance region for a hypothesis test is equivalent to a confidence interval, you know, given alpha. And so we're going to kind of use this hypothesis approach to find this confidence interval. And what, what we do is, given a sample value, we'll call it little x, we want to find the smallest lambda such that being greater than this, our sample value, is less than or equal to alpha over 2. And then the lambda that makes this true, then we're going to call that lambda L. And that's actually our critical region to the hypothesis test, which is also the uh, left endpoint to, or the lower endpoint of our confidence interval. And then to find the right side, we want to find the largest alpha such that being less than our sample value is less than or equal to alpha over 2. We're going to call that u sub alpha over 2. And then those two values end up being a confidence interval for lambda. Okay? And so one approach, if this is sort of uneasy to you, put this in the normal setting. Kind of go through the math and then you'll find that it makes total sense. So let's say we have a normal distribution and we have a sample uh, mean, so x bar, so and I'm pointing in, in the page here as an equivalent. You know, this on the page, of course, the Poisson. So we want to find a uh, mu, the smallest mu, such that being greater than our x bar is less than or equal to alpha. And then that's our lower uh, limit of our confidence interval, or the, or the re left rejection region. And then we want to find the largest mean mu such that being less than or equal to our sample mean is less than or equal to alpha over 2. And, that's, and then the mu upper is that value. So if you go through that with the mean, which is pretty familiar to everybody, you come up with the exact, you know, x bar plus or minus, you know, z sub sigma, you know, times sigma over uh, square root of n. Anyway, so it's the exact same approach, and so this is the approach that we're going to use in the Poisson process. And as I briefly mentioned before, there's two approaches, and one is we're going to use uni root in R, which I haven't seen before, but it's pretty intriguing. And then there's a relationship to Poisson sums and uh, the probability in a chi-square distribution. Okay. So in Uniroot, well, let's actually go to the next page. So here, here is our first solution. And um, remember, to, we want to find, um, or I guess we're going to do uh, lambda upper, the right endpoint of a confidence interval. So we want to find the largest lambda such that being less than our sample value is uh, alpha over 2 and this probability is this okay so now to do this we pick different values of lambda and so we pick a value and then we do this you know add complete the sum here and then we compare it to alpha over 2 if it's uh, too small then we increase lambda if it's too big then we decrease it well uniroot in uh, R if, and now this isn't the exact notation, I'm going to illustrate this in R, but if you create a function and now the P Poisson X Lambda, that's a CDF function, which is what this is right here. And then with minus alpha over 2, it finds the zero to this function. And you have to tell it that this is a function of Lambda. And then Uniroot finds it very, very quickly. Okay, and so and then we'll illustrate that in R in a second. Now to find the lower uh, lambda, we want to find the probability of being greater than our sample value is equal to alpha over 2. And then being greater than that is you sum from x to 
infinity and um, you pick lambda values you know you know you you pick low and then high and then you kind of zero in on the on the lambda well in in R the P Poisson is a default function it's a cumulative CDF so what I like to do is change this to a cumulative prob you know, distribution or probability. So you take one minus this, and um, which is this. So one one minus uh, this is equal to that, and then you can take the one over and solve to this. Anyway, and so we went from x to infinity, but here we go from zero to x minus one, and then you just this. If you treat this as a function of lambda then Uniroot solves it very, very quickly. And then those two values become our confidence interval for the mean. And now this one here is uh, the, the chi-squared relationship. Now I have a video um, proving this relationship and I'll put a link in the description for that. But the if being less than a value so a Poisson probably less than a value given mu is equal to this it's it's a chi-square random variable greater than two lambda u so i put lambda u because this is you know we want this to be a function of of u well if we can divide both sides by two and then um if if we want this chi-square random variable to be greater than some value equal to alpha over two well then we find the cdf of this which is one minus alpha and this is the degrees of freedom two times one plus x and then to solve for the upper you have to divide both sides by two and that's the one half well this is the upper limit of our confidence interval and again this relationship we can prove well i'll put a link to a video that i have to prove that and then here to find the lower we want to find the smallest value of lambda such that being bigger than our sample value is alpha over two but being greater than that is one minus you know being less than that but you have to subtract one and then if you take the one to the other side and multiply through by negative one you get this relationship well being the the probability of being less than a value in a poisson you know we just showed that that's equivalent to a chi-square random variable being greater than uh, two lambda and um we bring it down and so this is a poisson or, i mean a chi-square random variable so if we want to be you know greater than some point to be one over alpha that means a cumulative then it goes to alpha over two so lambda is you know can be rewritten like this so this has to be a chi-square random variable but then to solve for the lambda you have to divide both sides by two and so the values that we just solved for just then is our confidence interval and then this you see in the literature quite a bit um, as a and it's an exact confidence interval for a Poisson parameter. Okay, and so now let's illustrate this in R. Okay, I'm in R on a Ubuntu-based machine, which is Linux, and here we're going to illustrate how to find the exact confidence interval for, for a Poisson parameter. And we're just going to go through examples. The example one is if the number of accidents occurring on a highway each day is a Poisson random variable. We observe three ac accidents on a given day. What is the 95% confidence interval for the lambda, which is the number of events, number of accidents on a given day? So the two approaches, you know, first we're going to look at the lower endpoint, and and the first we're going to use uh, Uniroot, and we create this. Um, function here and that, and you have to tell it th that it is a function in X you know but and then that's our lambda parameter and then, then in Uniroot it helps to give it bounds so a low it, you know we think the lambda parameters between 0 and 100 and then this uh, since Uniroot produces a, a list this I just take 
the first element which is the lambda or the x that satisfies this. It's the zero of this function. And so to calculate that uh, we get a, a, a lambda of 0.618 etc. And then if we use the chi-square approach then we get the same lambda. So it, it's irrelevant of which approach. Now the chi-squared approach of course is what's most common in, in the literature. And then to find the upper confidence point uh, using the unit root we create the function in terms of our lambda parameter and let's run it and we get 876 and then use the chi-square approach and we get the same value. So a 95% confidence interval on the number of accidents in a certain stretch of highway is somewhere between 0.62 and 8.77. And let's do just one more example here. So let's assume that uh, we observe 22 adverse events in a clinical trial. And we want to uh, find confidence interval for the number of events observed in the clinical trial. And then we set up our function, you know, uh, the cumulative Poisson probability, and we calculate it. So it's 13.8. And if we were to use the chi squared approach, we, get, of course, get the same value. And then to find the upper endpoint, it's a Poisson. And here we use 22 this time, uh, going from x, or that's our lambda parameter. Anyway, we calculate it, we get 33.3, .3, and using the um, chi-squared approach, of course, it's the same value. And so, our confidence interval, and I don't know why I have that, it would be 33.3, .3, and the lower endpoint would be 13.8. Okay, so now... But sometimes in a clinical trial, we don't want the number of events. We want to say the average number of events. And so let's so let's assume in this clinical trial here that you know we observed 22 events, but the number of person years on the study was 400. So then what we do is we divide these endpoints by 400, and then that uh, calculates a and an, an average event rate across the study. So we can do that. And so here the uh, the confidence interval for the number of events per patient per uh, 100 patient years is uh, somewhere between 3 and 8. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you like the video, please like it and subscribe so you don't miss other videos. Yeah, thank you for watching.